بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم Previously we discussed where deen was circumstantial according to the place, the people that are around you, does a person become religious according to the time, Ramadan, Juma, Eid, etc. Become, uh, people become religious. Or number three, place. According to the place that we are in, a person is in Mecca, Medina, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does he become religious? The fourth point is halat and conditions. That a person changes, he becomes religious due to the situation and the difficulties and the problems that he's facing. These are three types. One is where a person just needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly is when he is he's in a situation, is a difficulty, he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or thirdly, in a situation and need, that's a means for him turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salam used to constantly read the dua Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar These points are highlighted so that we do not get caught from the plotting of nafs, shaitan, environment, etc. But we prepared that we want to achieve, we want to get the best of dunya and we want to acquire the best of akhirat and we have a target, we have a goal, we have an ambition in front of us. There was a story of a miser who collected money over a period of years and because he was so miserly and stingy, he made an agreement with his wife that when you bury me, I need all this wealth to be put with me in the grave so I can save it for the afterlife. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدِ Like Quran explains. This man, this human being, his love for dunya is shadid. The avarice, the ambition, the desire for dunya is on the next level. So anyway, the wife considered, accepted and he passed away and have it such. She made arrangements that he was in the grave. That box was placed in the grave as well. So a friend, seeing that she complied, asked her that is there something wrong with you? You with your husband so, so many years of your life, yet you never keep anything for you. Did you give everything to him? And it's not going to benefit him in the grave at all. So the lady replied, she said, yes, all I did was I took all the money, I deposited it in my bank account. I wrote him a check and I put it in the box. I wrote him a check and I put it in the box. So she got the best of both the worlds. She got the best of both the worlds. Why is a believer who plans, who makes effort, who strives, who sacrifices and makes sure they get the best of both the worlds, the best of dunya and the best of akhirat. So our deen should be number one when a person has halat and situations, so for example, a person is in love with somebody and you want them to fall in love with you or you want them to marry you, etc. So your person doesn't have a situation on him, he has a need. So when he has this need, now he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, a person, for example, once you have a very fancy, a very lavish wedding, there's no need for that. But now he goes into debt. So now he turns to Amal, he turns to Allah. So it's just a need. This, this, this love of this world is not actually real love, it's just an infatuation. When a youngster was following a girl, so she stopped and she turned around and she said, why are you following me? He said, it's love at first sight. I just seen you and I fell in love with you. So she said, have you seen my sister? She's even prettier than me. She just went round the corner. She just went round the corner. And as he turned to look, she gave him one smack. And she said, you said love at first sight, yet your gaze goes somewhere else. It shouldn't be also that we say that we love Allah and His Rasul and halat and conditions come because of our insincerity and our deception. So that's the first step. Where a person has a need and then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type is where a person has conditions, they have difficulties, trials, tribulations, 
different stumbling blocks in their life and then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether a person has a health issue, uh, whether a person has a financial issue, whether there's debt collectors on his back, whether he's lost his job. Sometimes you see somebody in the masjid, hey, I haven't seen you for long. Hey, make dua. You know what? I got an audit. Uh, this is a very serious audit. So these halal, these conditions now make a person turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as mentioned previously, we leave Allah for last. Like the son was sick and a father took his son to a normal doctor. He said, no, you need to go to a specialist. He went to a specialist. He said, it's too serious. You need to go to somebody who is an expert. He went to the expert. After the expert telling him that there's no options left, your son will die as he's walking out of the theater, the consultation room, he tells his son, you know what, don't despair, Allah is there. Don't despair, Allah is there. So it shouldn't be that we turn to Allah only in situations. And to understand this, there are five types of people. The one type of person who you don't know from a bar of soap is a complete stranger. Second person is you are familiar, but you're never in contact with them at all. You're never ever in contact with them at all. Third one is who you are familiar with, he's an acquaintance, randomly you will chat, you meet, etc. The fourth one is a friend where you socialize with, you meet all the time, you're in communication with. And the fifth is your loved one where you spend most of your time, you, you uh, look forward and anticipate their company. Now based on these five people, from a complete stranger who you don't know from a bar of soap, if he asks you for something, how much of your wealth will you part with and how much of your time will you part with? And going down, let us ponder on each category and the last, somebody that you love and you're ready to give your life for. When they ask you, I need something, how much will you comply? Based on that, we need to see what is our taluk? What is our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when there is a need, when this person asks, when he's complete stranger, the farishas also say, who is this? This unfamiliar voice, we don't even know. So that person is a complete stranger, most of the time he would be ignored or he would be given something just for the sake of getting rid of him. For the sake of getting rid of him. So it shouldn't be that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we increase our amal because of the halat and the conditions. So that was the first category where a person, when he needed Allah, then he turned to Allah, but he wasn't obeying Allah all the time. The second category where a person, halat and conditions came and on that conditions now, he started turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he started becoming obedient and he started making dua and he started giving sadaqah and he started being dindar. So that's based on circumstances and that's why Nabi alayhi salam has enjoined Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Sari'u ila sabiqu ila maghfiratim min rabbikum Rush, hari, sari'u, sabiqu, badiru bil amali sab'an. Oh my sahaba, Nabi alayhi salam is in Karim sahaba. Do not wait for these seven things to happen. The explanation is quite detailed. I'll just give you the tarjuma and translation of the hadith. Hal tantadiruna illa faqran munsiyan? Oh sahaba, are you waiting for poverty to come? The day when you have poverty, you will forget Allah. Oh ghinan mudghiyan. Or oh, wealth will come and you'll use that same wealth to disobey Allah. You will use that same wealth to go to haram places. You will use those same wealth to buy haram instruments. Oh, maradhan mufsidan. Are you waiting for such sickness to come? You will be so sick that you cannot obey Allah anymore. Oh, haraman mufannidan. Are you waiting for old age where you are senile? Now you cannot obey your creator. Oh, motan mujizan. Or are you waiting for sudden death? Like today, suddenly we are in this person passed away, that person passed away. I knew him. Yesterday we met. Today he's in the qabr. Are we Dajjalu? Or are you waiting for Dajjal? If these aforementioned points are not in good enough to make you rush to Amal, then every Nabi came and warned his Ummah about the coming of Dajjal. Fasharru ghaibin yuntadhar. 
don't ever wait. Don't ever wait for the presence of Dajjal because those days will be very difficult and it will be a trial where many people will fail. Awisa'atu If you're waiting for Qiyamah then wasa'atu adha wa amar then that is something you don't want to wait for. That is a trial you don't want to wait for. Sumantani rahmatullahi wa sallam zahar al-fasad fi al-barri wa al-bahri bima kasabat aydi al-nas that when conditions come to a believer some people get close to Allah some people get further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a story of a man who left his home country and he was in a foreign country now he was searching for a job opportunity he came to a Jewish company in, uh, in the interview they asked him a few questions then the interview said I will give you the job if you shave your beard means you fulfill the criteria but we need you to shave your beard so the next day when he came to job to work his beard was shaven the 30 years of beard he sacrificed it in one night for dunya the employer said that man who cannot obey his creator how will he obey us how he will how will he be faithful in our employment so when halat come then some people leave deen when there is and uh, a time will come in uh, my ummah يَبِعُوا دِينَهُ بِعَلَضٍ مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا In the morning he will have Iman, at night he will sell his Iman. At night he will have Iman, in the morning he will sell his Iman. Why? Because of dunya. There was one joker, jester, who used to make jokes to the king. One day the king said, you will never ever trick me. This is my one trade which I know I'm good at. Normally I give you this amount for your jokes. I will give you one bag of gold coins if you trick me. So the joker laughed and went away. A long time passed and the king was gone hunting and he came to an area where a famous Buzruk was renowned. So normally he used to take dua, he used to like the ulama, spend time in their company. So he sent a gift to this Buzruk. When the courtiers returned, he said he refused your gift. And he said, do you think so? We pious people are out there for dunya. So the king was impressed. So he said, send a message, I want to visit him. So he refused. He said, do you think so? We, the people of Allah, have time for the people of the dunya? Your instructions we will not comply with. But if you request, I will consider it. So he sent back the courtiers, request him, can I come and meet him? And take a time from him. So they came to the Buzruk, they requested and they asked for time. He gave the time. This person came, he met the Buzruk, he asked him for some advice, he gave him some advices. As he was leaving, he told the courtiers, bring, send from my treasures some boxes of gold. This man is one of the few scholars of this time that I've met, that the dunya has not affected them. He looked at him, he looked at his house, he looked at his life conditions, and he was impressed. When they sent those boxes, the Buzruk got upset and furiated. The news got to the king, he said, I need to go ask this Buzruk for maaf. When he got back to the pious person and asked him for maaf, he laughed. So the king was shocked and surprised, why are you laughing? So he said, did you not recognize me? He said, no, I don't recognize you. He said, I'm the joker. I'm the joker. When you put this challenge on me, I created this whole scene and scenario. So the king was impressed and he said, but why didn't you just take the boxes of gold and you set it for, settled for one bag of gold compared to back boxes of gold? He said, oh king, I was in the garb of the pious. And if I took those boxes of gold, I would have tainted, I would have tarnished the reputation of the friends of Allah. The reputation of the friends of Allah was more important to me than a thousand boxes of gold. We are people of Iman. 
We are the followers of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How much of the reputation of my Nabi, how much of the reputation of Deen have I tarnished and sold my Deen for this dunya? We need to be checking ourselves all the time. We need to be checking ourselves all the time. In Aligarh University, a lecture was fixed and it was said a Swiss, a Swedish air hostess will be speaking. All the students were anticipating and waiting for this and the day came and the curtains opened. And it was the girls university. So as the curtain opened, a female garbed in hijab, they were flabbergasted and astonished to see they, in their mind a Swedish air hostess that was in their mind. So as the curtain opened and people were surprised, she noticed their surprise on their faces. And she started speaking and she said that Islam had brought honor to the Muslims. Islam had brought honor to the females of this Ummah. And that which the West has vomited, have puked, the Muslims are leaking on that. Islam has brought life to you and you have brought death to yourselves. Islam has brought happiness to you and you have brought sadness to yourselves. Islam has kept happiness for the wife, for the woman in their houses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made you the queens of the house. You have decided you want to become the slaves of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made you so that you could serve Allah. And now you want to serve the makhluk of Allah and your bosses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you so that in the house you can make a family. And now you are breaking families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you so that you can preserve chastity. And you have torn the garbs of chastity. In that way of life which they have abandoned. And now they are embrace, embracing the culture of Islam. They are embracing the akhlaq of Islam. They are embracing the amal of Islam. Batil and the West. That which they have abandoned. Today the Muslims are embracing. So is it because of these situations have we sacrificed our deen, we've compromised our deen. Now a person turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his voice is not familiar in the asman, his, 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 his dua, his call is like a, 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 a child who is completely disobedient and never listens. And another son who is always obedient, even before the child asks, the father gives his needs. And the child is disobedient, even if he asks, he doesn't get it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of perpetually doing amal, no matter what the circumstances. For today, one amal which we should make amal on is to preserve our wudu constantly, to try to be in wudu all the time. Nabi Ali Salam was so particular that even when he made istinja from the place of relieving himself to the place of wudu, he made tayammum. Not one split second should I be in a impurity. I need to say, وَلَوْ يُحَافِظْ عَلَى الْهُدُو إِلَّا مُؤْمِنْ that only a believer will be constant on his wudu. Once he met Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu and he said, Sabaqtani ila al-jannah. I seen you in jannah. Dakhaltu al-bariha al-jannah. I entered jannah. I seen jannah. Allah showed me jannah and I heard your footsteps in front of me. So Bilal radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, ma adhantu qattu illa sallaytu rak'atain. That after adhan I was particular about two rak'ats of salat. Either it is Tahit al Wudu, Tahit al Masjid, Wama Asabani Hadathun Qatu illa Tawadbatu indaha. And whenever I was in a state of impurity, I made fresh Wudu. Fakala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bihada, Bihada, O Bilal, it is because of this action 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the stages in Akhirah. So let us make a need to be constant in wudu. Ulama explained that even protection from jadu, sihar, shayateen, the longer that we are in wudu, the more it creates a shield around our body. Also, protection from other elements. A person that's constant in wudu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects him from very many unseen elements. And those elements are in the ilm of Allah. For example, if you leave your utensils open during the time of the year, if that utensil is open, then sicknesses will spread. That's not in our ilm, that's in the ilm of Allah. That's an unseen ilm. So let us make that niyat. And secondly, the dua for today is to read A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajeem 10 times. Man ista'adha Billahi fi al-yawmi ashra marwat min ash-shaytani. Whoever says A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajeem 10 times in the day. So let's try to do this, make this ma'mul when we read our morning and evening duas. وَكَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَلَّكًا يَرُدُّ عَنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints an angel that will protect him from the plotting and the evils of shayateen وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ